Welcome to our view. Don't change that dial because we have a show today that I think would be of interest to every grandparent, parent, and child for a living legacy. This show airs five times a week for a month and sometimes more often on Sunday at 11.30 a.m. and 3.30 a.m., on Monday at 11.30 a.m., on Thursday at 8.30 p.m., and Saturday at 5.30 p.m. Now, today we have a show that has been my interest for many, many years, and that is for parents and grandparents to leave a legacy of family history for future generations. And the person in Santa Barbara to do that is Marcia Orland of Afterglow. So welcome, Marcia, Afterglow Media, I should say. So welcome. Uh, let's go back to the beginning. I, I am so impressed with how you divorced and moved to California with four children. And it rang a bell with me because I also divorced and moved to California. But I had a job waiting for me to teach acting and directing for Lee Strasberg. And you just moved out without any job and, and you developed your career from then on. So tell us a little bit about your background and how it led into Afterglow Media where you make these wonderful living histories for people. Well, thank you, Lori. I appreciate the opportunity, and I'm, I'm happy to be on your show today. Well, you're most welcome. It was probably a combination of a little bit of courage and a lot of naivete that allowed me to pick up and move after a divorce across the country and come to California where I didn't have any idea what I was going to do. I think I that's had, wonderful. <laughs> I even had an actress daughter already here where I could stay, and you just came, you had to find a place to live, I imagine. I did, I, I stayed first. I came out alone first and then brought my kids out after I found a place to live. And how old were your kids? They ranged from six to 10, oh four my of them. God. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I had this little bundle. We were sort of like the Brady Bunch, uh -huh. or one half of the Brady Bunch, mm -hmm. I guess. And I, I did get a job and I worked for a while, and ended up in financial services and then fast forward I remarried and then when my parents passed away in 2004 I realized that there were so many pictures and so many things and questions that I didn't know the answers to and uh, my sisters and I kind of puzzled over when were they on a boat when we saw a picture of a boat you know where were they going and so I just decided I was going to start telling, helping people record their memories for their families. And I just advise people in Santa Barbara to come to you and Afterglow <laughs> for that because 10 years ago, I did it. And this is what I did. And it just took me forever. And I had to travel to LA to a former student, Brad Bucher, for the editing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it took me forever, but I was able to tell about grandparents and parents and how we were Lincoln Republicans because we didn't believe in slavery. And now I'm a great grandmother and so much has happened with my grandchildren and I'm going to add to it with your help eventually. Well, I'll be <laughs> happy to A half hour of it is on our website, Just Between Us, SB dash Just Between Us. But uh, with a great grandchild now, I just have to put her pictures in and, and add to it. And I'll, I'll come to you for that. Well, because thank you. I think you do wonderful work. Thank you. I really appreciate yes. that. Um, I did bring a few samples with me today that I think you have the clip that they're going to run. Okay. And I, I just want to tell you that you're going to see three different samples of how a video documentary can work. The first one is uh, Elaine and she's basically sitting and talking with the addition of photos and things to illustrate what she's talking about. Second one, Jean, is actually moving around in her yard and we do a lot of things to show 
sort of what her life is like and her environment around her. How wonderful. And then the third one is still Jean, but she's cooking a recipe for her family and <laughs> she's talking while she's cooking. So it shows you three different ways in which you can do this. So go ahead and okay. run that clip. So let's run the clip, Mark. I was working at the district attorney's office as a secretary when I got a call from a colonel whom I had met in Washington. And he said, when I knew you, you said you wanted to go to law school, would you like to go to Japan for six months? They're going to have this trial of these Japanese war criminals, and it would be good experience. If you want to, I can tell you who to write to. So I said, that sounds good. So I applied, and I was accepted, and I ended up going to Japan. I worked for the Japanese defending the war criminals, and I was just a secretary then but I worked for the leading lawyers, and I was very close to the Japanese, and I was the only American female that the war criminals saw for two and a half years. My piano teacher came at 6 a.m. to give me lessons, and I vividly remember that first lesson because she taught me the beginning of Yankee Doodle. To put my thumb on middle C, and start that tune, seven notes. That was my first lesson. The next note is the G below middle C. And I remember spending that whole week looking at that note and wondering what it was. Cooking has not been one of my skills through the years. I was invited to a party at which Peter's first wife, Annie, was also invited. I heard Annie's voice soar above everybody else's. And she said, there's one wonderful thing about my mother-in-law. So of course, I immediately listened up, leaned forward, tried to hear what she thought was a wonderful thing, and Annie said, my husband never says, I wish you could cook like my mother does. <laughs> I just want to say one more thing about uh, mine, the wonderful world of Lori. I accidentally uh, had the song by Louis Armstrong, What a Wonderful World. It was all the way through, but accidentally, when he sang about green trees, there was a picture that was able to come up of my three grandchildren in front of green trees making a snowman outside my mom's hospital window. And uh, I'm very pleased with that song all the way through. That's my song. Yes. <laughs> so now you do so many wonderful legacies for people. Uh, what else would you like to tell us about your Afterglow Media Company? I know you do weddings and uh, parties and as well as living histories. Well, I, <laughs> I have done montages for different events, but mm -hmm. I prefer to get the voice of the person on camera if I can. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think 
what, what I like to do for people, sometimes I just give them tips about things they can do themselves to get the conversation started. Mm -hmm. it, it's not about getting close to death. I mean, when you think about it, life is a terminal disease. We all have it, right? I'm afraid so. We all have it. And However, <laughs> I uh, am a member of Alcor Foundation. Mm -hmm. And I and two members of my family are going to be frozen. And we have had people on about stem cell research. Mm. And there is hope that people can be revived. That's true. Because, you know, if you love life and you're curious about what happens, why, that is one possibility. Mm -hmm. OK, now back to you. <laughs> I had to tell that. Well, that, that's fascinating. Yes. And, um, I, I'm working on a project right now actually advocating for uh, elderly people to understand the choices they have at the end of their life mm -hmm. and that uh, people sometimes don't realize that there are choices and that's just one of them, you know? Yes, I, it's had, important to, that I you had to have life insurance for all of us for years right. to pay for it. Mm -hmm. and life insurance will pay for it. That's uh -huh. great. Uh -huh. Well, let me give you an example of uh, for example, let's see, here's a photograph that was taken when I was probably six with my girlfriends. And if you'll notice in this picture, everyone's wearing a dress. <laughs> and we grew up near Buffalo, and the winters were very harsh, but kids always wore dresses in But didn't those you days. have snowsuits in the winter? Well, we did when we went outside. Yes, yes. But when I we were remember in, those too. Oh, right? yes. But uh -huh. in school or when you were outside in the summertime, mm -hmm. you played in dresses. And when what I like to tell people is having a photograph is great, but if you don't know the story behind it, it, is, it doesn't mean as much. And this is another example of a photograph on my third birthday. And at the age of three, my dad started buying me a corsage for every birthday. I had a wonderful father, too. And here <laughs> is the corsage that I'm wearing in that picture. That's terrific. And it is actually um, the one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the picture that you see on the table in this photograph is this picture here. So that's why... It, it talks about, this is a picture of my father and me, actually. Mm -hmm. And so being able to take those photographs and tell stories about them is much more meaningful. So Yes, and your clients can do uh, what I did on mine, a voiceover, yes. explaining the pictures. I yes. remember going to this place in LA, and it took me a long time just to do the voiceover Oh, explaining yes. all the still pictures. Mm -hmm. And I know your clients can do that they, also. Absolutely. Yes. If I don't get them on video talking about right. them and, and adding them in. Uh, another thing I recommend for people, when you get together as a family, because today's get-togethers to, get with families are very different than they used to be. Mm -hmm. The kids are texting, they're watching football, they're, they're distracted. So oh, I found that out <laughs> at one of my parties. There you go. <laughs> right. Oh, they were, they were, you know, watching a football game. <laughs> right, and they're, they're, they're not, we don't sit around the table and tell stories like we used to. Mm -hmm. But I recommend that when you have a family get together, to have a moment of show and tell. And oh, you tell good. each of the, whoever's going to be there, including the kids, to bring something that's important to them and have them spend just a couple minutes explaining why it's important. For instance, at my show and tell, I brought this trophy, which it's engraved with my dad's name and 1939 champion of the club, Silver Lake Country Club, that he won the year I was born. Oh. And that when I turned 13, I think, I began caddying for him. Oh. My. And he was a champion golfer, and uh, and my then father I won too. We really? have so much in common. <laughs> we have to talk after this. <laughs> I have his medal, right? <laughs> there you go. Right. But show and tell is a good way for mm -hmm. kids to begin to learn more about their family's stories using right. an object. Right. So I uh, may do that when I am in New Orleans visiting my first great grandchild. There you go. <laughs> right. 
So another thing I recommend is you have photographs on the wall and paintings right. and, and artwork that you've collected. If you write a little note about how you came about owning it, mm -hmm. where you were if you were traveling, just write a little story about that and put it in an envelope and tape it to the back. Then one day, everybody will know why it was important. Oh, that's good, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or even uh, the family pictures. Uh, Who's when in When they them? show them, they can have a voiceover you know, telling oh, about, sure. about them. Yeah, I, I tend to tell people how to do it themselves, and I forget I, I own my own business, and mm -hmm. I, I want to be able to do it for people there, too. But, but yes, um, it's a wonderful thing to do, and I love speaking to groups to tell them the importance of it and, and give them tips too. Oh, it's a wonderful legacy to leave for future well, it is. generations. I wish I had one. I I of my read own my grandmother's diary and my husband's grandmother's diary. Mm -hmm. One was from Richmond, Virginia and the other one from Iowa. And there was much that was similar and much that was not similar. And that gave me the impetus to to do this mm -hmm. because I found the diary so interesting. Yes. And my children will say, uh, well, maybe no one will be interested. But for my 86th birthday, my daughter made copies of this for me. And she put in a biography. Nice. And she had made on, and maybe you are aware of this, a stone. DVDs, mm -hmm. stone DVDs, which are to last longer than mm -hmm. like a thousand years than the regular. Right. And so I have that for everyone in the family. Now I'll have to make some more stone DVDs yes. to bring it up to date <laughs> with the grandchildren and all my grandchildren, great grandchildren and all my grandchildren have done much since then, you know. Oh, of course. In the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Shall I tell you about the journey I'm going on? Yes, that was my, going to be my next question <laughs> because I think that's a wonderful idea. So uh, tell our viewing audience about it. <clears throat> well, about five years ago, I began thinking about my remaining first cousins, who I still have, who were part of my growing up years, but whom I have not seen in over 50 years. And I was thinking, how wonderful to go find them and, oh, yes. and uh, talk to them about what they remember growing up. Well, fast forward five years, I just turned 76, and I decided I better get cracking or I'm going to miss the opportunity. You're going to get too tired to travel that I'm much. just <laughs> not going to do it. I take it for one or another. <laughs> <laughs> so I reached out to each one of them, mm -hmm. and uh, they all agreed that they would re let me record them. And what states are you going to visit? Well, I'll visit them in Tucson, mm -hmm. Arizona. That's a good first stop. And then uh, Pasadena, Texas, mm -hmm. Lee's Summit, Missouri, mm -hmm. Rochester, New York, Richmond, Virginia, mm. Dothan, Alabama, and then I'm heading to Florida to, to reunite with my sisters for a little while. Mm -hmm. It's going to take, it's a 5,000 mile journey and it's going to take me total about 37 days. Now who is going with you? Anyone? Nobody. You're going, going alone? all by myself, oh. renting a car, taking my camera with me. So I hope to kind of record some people I meet along the way, maybe mm -hmm. get them to tell some stories in each of the little stopovers. And I intend to make a little video documentary for the film festival here. Oh, that would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. I would advise you to keep it to your family. Ah. I, you know, because if you bring in a lot of extra people, why, it's going to disperse a little. I mean, your family sounds like that's going to be so interesting. It might be enough, yes. Yes. But I want to spread the word wherever uh -huh. I go how important it is for people to do this. Yes. I was able to be with all of my cousins uh, at the 101 birthday party for an aunt. Oh, wow. And then also... I gave the eulogy for her funeral when she died at 103. Oh, my goodness. And we were all able to go back for that. Uh, she, where was that? That was in Iowa. In Iowa. Uh-huh. West Bend, Iowa. And that uh, sort of kept us all together. Mm -hmm. And I just had an email from one of my cousins who had uh, saw my website, my professional website about method acting, on uh, the website of the school where she teaches. And she said, I was so delighted to see about my cousin and what she's doing. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. That's I fantastic. don't understand 
the internet too well. <laughs> <laughs> well, it takes on a life of its own, doesn't it? It certainly does, mm -hmm. yes. You have wonderful uh, information up on the internet. You're on LinkedIn, are you not? Mm -hmm. And so am I. Yes. And then you have a wonderful website for your Afterglow Media. media. Mm -hmm so uh, people can find you. Oh, yes, they can. <laughs> mm -hmm. And one thing that you have that I think is a wonderful idea is you have a telephone number and you tell people to call you for a free consultation. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. I wish I would have thought of that about our acting classes. <laughs> I think that's a, that's a wonderful idea. Well, it gives me a chance to talk about something that I'm very passionate about. Right. And, uh, you know, we do it over a cup of coffee, and, and it's great. And I, I just love it. And so a cup of coffee, you meet with them, or you can do it on the telephone? We can whichever. do it on the phone, but it's, it's nice to sit down and meet with them and just see what they're, what they're interested in. Yes, yes. Th those uh, clips that you showed were so interesting. Thank you. About Japan and then uh, the, yes. the lady who... <laughs> <laughs> they never talk about cooking. I identify with that too. <laughs> yeah, it's so great. So when fun. we're involved with careers, we don't cook too much. <laughs> no, that is true. Yeah, right. That is true. Right. Well, what else would you like to tell us about yourself or your business? Gosh, it's it's. Uh, I could go on all day long about about what I do because I'm so passionate about it. I. I think sometimes people want to know how you get started, and mm -hmm. one of the things I do is to help people with what we call memory triggers. Like a memory trigger, if I say to you, skate key. Mm. Kids today don't have any idea what a skate key is. A what? <laughs> and, but what you will remember is the skates that used to clamp onto the bottom of your shoes, and you twisted with a skate key to tighten them. Now yeah. that's my father's generation. He had a skate key, but mm -hmm. I remember I had regular. Uh, we had we had a foot. skate key and and ice the, skates. Yeah, you know? it depends on where you are. Uh -huh. This is roller skates I'm talking about. Oh, oh, roller I was skates. thinking of ice skating. Yeah, yes, uh -huh. roller skates that clamped onto the uh -huh. saddle shoes and. Uh, <laughs> depends on a person's age and well, where they does. grew up, I guess. But there's so much that kids don't know about today. Right. You know, and in your former business of acting, you can mention actors' names and the kids are going to go, who? That's right. I mean, that's kind of a scary thing to me. Gregory Peck and Jimmy Stewart and, and they go, uh, I'm that? amazed <laughs> in some of our, my lessons in acting classes of Academy Award winning actors and mm -hmm. they don't know. That's right. They, and, they and don't know them. Well, there were um, something like phones the kids today with their cell phones. And mm -hmm. I tell them, well, we didn't have cell phones back then. We had uh, phone numbers, like my aunt and uncle was 21. That was their phone number. Our phone number was 33. And mine at home was 133. There you go. I remember. Yep. It's yes. just, it's so different today. Mm -hmm. we, had, we had radio, and I saw every radio show I heard. So did I. You could see what was happening. Mm -hmm. You didn't need the images. Our imagination has really worked. Yes, mm -hmm. and that's, uh, that's something that kids today will never be able to experience. It's seen on the screen by them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They have to be told what they're supposed to be looking at. Mm -hmm. That's what television does. <laughs> <laughs> but that's part of your business, too. <laughs> it is. <laughs> is putting up a screen of people's putting lives. Putting up the visual so people can right. see. Yeah. Right. So. so, I think, uh, again, to our viewing audience, I advise you to contact Marcia and her Afterglow Media Company because I think it's wonderful to leave a legacy for future generations. And I know that I have to do the last 10 years. I had one grandson who graduated from CalArts in music, and my granddaughter in New Orleans uh, has schools for autistic children, oh. and she's been named Women of the Year mm. down there. My other grandson graduated with an MA from LSU as an account. I mean, they've all done wonderful careers at, that's not on this tape yet. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I have to have a second tape. 
Well, I will tell you, although I thought I invented this business, mm -hmm. I soon learned that there's a whole association of people who do it. It's the Association of Personal Historians. So if people aren't right in Santa Barbara, they can go to that website and, uh -huh. and find a personal historian. Or I can help them find someone. Yes, well, if they saw your clips, they realize that you do a wonderful, wonderful work. And, Thank you. And uh, I hope to get sh my last 10 years on with you eventually. Oh, I'm <laughs> sure we'll do it. Absolutely. So I think our time is almost up. Do we have, what, how many minutes left? Two minutes left. Oh. So is there anything you'd like to say in oh. the last two minutes? <laughs> <laughs> or tell our viewing audience? Well, I, I think it's, it's as you, you've been such an advocate for this, I feel like there's nothing more that I have to <laughs> say. But I, I think that when people think about leaving a legacy, they sometimes think, well, it sounds like I'm going to die. And it's, well, we're all going to die, OK? Mm -hmm. we, we know that. But it's, it's what happens between those firsts that we have when we first are born till the lasts that we have at the end of our life. All that's packed in the middle is such a rich library right. of information that we will take with us if we don't record it. it. You can take it with you. And it's important to do it before one loses memory mm -hmm. and loses one's marbles. <laughs> I hear that all I the time. I find that the older I get, the, I mean, I can remember <laughs> from way back, but the, some of the recent things I don't remember so well. That's right. So it's important to do it while one is still quite mm -hmm. alert. Yes. I agree. Yes. That's why I'm doing it now myself. I think you're wise. Uh, I did it at your age, actually. Yes, you did. That's <laughs> right. So you're wise. OK. So uh, for people who live in Santa Barbara, Afterglow Media is the place to go to leave a living legacy for your children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and future generations. I leave tomorrow for New Orleans on a personal note to see my first great-grandchild. So this has been a great show to tie in with everything that's happening in Marsha's life with her trip and my life with a trip to New Orleans. Congratulations, by the way. Well, thank you, and thank you for being on the show. And thank you for all the crew work here, too. Martine, Tyler, Diane, Mark, and I'm sorry, uh, throw your name out to me. <laughs> I just, we've had wonderful crews here. Mm -hmm. And Martine, thank you for helping. <laughs>